says we are live. I'm going to try to invite Dan. Sent. Okay. Says we are live. Wendy Bird is watching. Okay. Dan, as soon as it pops up to where I can add you, I will. Josh Baker's watching. That's great. Somebody post a comment. Tell them, tell me if I, they can hear me and see me okay. Add. It's coming your way, Dan. Boom. There we go. There you go. That's what's up. Now, how come you can't get it to work on your end? I don't know. Welcome to Facebook fuckery. Right. Now, go to your go back to your phone and share this to your Facebook page. That way all your people can see it. You know, tell them, explain that we had to do it backwards. Michael Patterson is watching. Hello, Michael Patterson. We had some technical malfunctions over there on Live Me. I couldn't hear him. I don't know if he could hear me or not, but I couldn't hear a word he was saying. I'll go ahead and send out a bunch of invites for you, Dan. It's not letting me fucking share it. Really? Huh. Weird. Mm, let's you want to go do it? Do you want to try and do it from your page like we normally do? That should do it right there. Yep, I just did it. Okay, I figured it out. Uh, cool. Aaron Steele, how you doing, buddy? Might be a privacy setting issue, Josh said. Yep, yeah, here's Kenny Barker. He popped in. All right, cool. Where's our filthy fucker, Jimmy Rocker? Michael Patterson, Mike, Michael Patterson said buffering bad. That's probably on your end because I'm getting Dan okay and you're getting me all right, ain't you, Dan? Doing good, man. What's up? Having some technical difficulty. This is Dan Edwards with Mad Nasty Trapping. And we usually do this the other way. He's usually in my place, and I'm usually in his place doing a live first yet track cast. All right, I sent some invites out. Uh, am I in a small window in your corner, or am I in like a side by side? You're in a small window up here, right there. Yeah, that's cool. Whatever. I gotta, I gotta start ripping. So we'll just let people come in. You can narrate and you can run your shit. And I'm just gonna start ripping because I, right. I got, I got, I gotta get off of here in an hour, dude. I got no vehicle. My vehicle done, fucking done, dude. All right, I'll watch the time for you, bub. Yeah, I it's got till I got till like one thirty, one forty-five latest. This clock right here is an hour slow. It says 11.57, so at 12.57, I'll, I'll let you know. All right. So hey, how does Kenny it feel to host it, Ryan? Uh, I've hosted live streams before, man. It is what it is. I'll do what I can to help you. But anyway, folks, my name's Brian Wall with Buyer Boys Outdoors. And up here, I think he's right here for you guys. That's Dan Edwards with Mad Nasty Trapping. Go over to YouTube, 
Subscribe and not notification bell for Mad Nasty Trapping. Uh, you'll have to plug your own Instagrams and all that stuff when you get a chance, Dan. It's basically Mad Nasty Trapping across the board, with the exception right. of Facebook, which is Dan Edwards, yep. Right. So, but anyway, he's got a few critters to skin down. We usually do this backwards. And, you know, he's full screen and I'm mini screen, but is what it is. Uh, I don't understand what's going on there either, Michael, because uh, one of my buddies that lives down the road here, he said, I'm coming in clear as ever clear. So, but anyway, he's got, well, how many did you say, four coons and a possum to skin? Five, five coons, one possum. Five coons and one possum. All right, cool. So he's got at least an hour's worth of skin and maybe some more. But anybody that rolls in here, I am doing Trapper's Chat. If you have any questions for Dan, just ask him. Or I'll, I will ask him if it's in the comments, I'll ask him for you. And, you know, anything yep. related to trapping, uh, hunting, fishing that I know about, I will do my best to answer for you. But mainly trapping questions, please. <clears throat> until, fil until filthy fucker Jimmy Rocker jumps in. I sent him an I invite. Can... Let me see if I can send him one. You haven't seen him jump in yet, have you? No, it ain't said nothing. There's Michael Patterson. There's Kelly. Is his name really Jimmy Rucker? Do you have, uh, yeah, Jimmy Rucker. Do you have him on Messenger? Can you deck him on Messenger and uh, let him know? Yeah, I just sent him an invite through here. What's up, Tabitha? How you doing? We're hosting a reverse fur shed trapper's chat tonight because he couldn't get his to work. So that's what's up. I sent him an invite, Dan, so we'll see what happens. Right on. I mean, he's a regular. It would not surprise me he pops up in there. He right. just don't really seem like a technology dude to really know. Right. You know. You got to love it when your ex-girlfriend pops up in here and, you know, just says hi and with a big smiley face with hearts for eyes. I talked to you the other it's night. It's amazing that you're not a. Uh, it's amazing that you're not a polygamist, there, buddy, and uh, having multiple wives the way you got women huddling around your ass all the time. <laughs> you can ask Tabitha. I don't know what it is, but man, it. I don't know what it is, but I can. I got women all over the place. I don't know. I don't know if it's the bibs, the, the blue eyes, the red beard. Yep, I love you too, Tabby. Be good. Keep your shit together. You know what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can actually share this over to your page. Or did you already do that? I think I have, but you, you might want to double deck it. All right. That's and good. if worse comes to worse, then tomorrow I'll just erase the double, you know? Um, Kenny, if I've got this correct, he had some issues with his uh, trapping rig. That's why he had to go ahead and pull the line early. That is correct. I snapped the frame rail on both sides, left and right side, by the rear leaf spring shackles. Catastrophic. Clean, clear through. Trapping. Clean and hey, clear Kenny through Barker. on the rig. Kenny Barker, go ahead and share this broadcast, man, because we got to get it over to Dan's and get some more people in here for him. I'm going to go ahead and do it, too. I sent Jimmy Rucker the invite. Yeah, I don't know what's... Uh, what about Amber Rose? Do we have Amber Rose on there? I haven't seen her pop She's up yet. She's a regular in uh, 
She's a regular, and so is Ashley Compton, C-U-M-P-T-O-N. Right. I just invited Amber. Let me go get Ashley. Ashley yeah, Compton. Yeah, it's spelled C-U-M-P-T-O-N. Yeah, I got it. I sent an invite for you, bub. Let's see. Larry. Is that her old man's name's Larry? Yeah, Larry, Larry Compton. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of people that I know are regulars on your on your page because I haven't added very many of them as friends. Yeah, we got to work on your uh, we got to work on your YouTube too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can sub in if you were to do a YouTube live. I don't know yeah. if I could sub in on there or not, since I'm banned know. from YouTube for three months. Right. We might be able to. We'll have to check that out. Cool. Kenny Barker said he's Yeah, here. we got to do something to up your YouTube numbers, too. Right. All right, Aaron. Be good, man. Be safe, man. There's no, there's no reason why your uh, subscriber count on YouTube should be as low as it is. I've only got, like, three videos. <laughs> you too, man. Be uh, good. You know you can share all these lives. You can share all these lives to it. So yeah. we got four viewers, Dan. Yep. That's not much below the the normal average usually. Yeah. Dude, when I come on here during daylight hours, dude, like I was out here at like 6 o'clock this afternoon, I had a whole lot more viewers. Right. There's Stephen Cooper. Good. At least he gets the chat rocking. Well, I just invited him. I'm just rolling through the invite names here. Everybody I can think of that remote oh you know he'll bring up oh no I'm i was gonna say you know that i was gonna say that you know that steven cooper will bring up uh amber rose real quick but uh amber rose didn't invite or didn't uh, accept his invite or some shit oh she uh i sent her a uh facebook request the same night that uh, i met her you know what i mean i met her and uh she accepted it right off the right off the bat Tabitha, you you watched all my YouTube videos the other night. Is that what you're saying, or all of Dan's? And Tabitha watched all mine. Go over to uh, Mad Nasty Trapping on YouTube, Tabitha. That's this guy right here. Give him a sub and a, and a notification bell push here. He's got some good videos, and I'm in a few of his live stream uh, trappers chats. Pretty knowledgeable feller. He's good at what he's doing. I try to be. Dude, the head on this one's a fucking chore, bro. Male? Is it a boar coon? Yeah, he ain't a big one, though. He's a small one, probably a year and a half or so. Yeah. Freaking cold, man. My hands are freezing out here. You ain't got no heater in that garage? I do, but it's a little tiny, it's a little tiny piece of shit, you know, a plug-in. It's a little yeah. plug-in space heater. And anything bigger than that um, blows the goddamn circuit breaker box downstairs. Need to, get you a little, need to get you a little wood stove put in there. 
I need to get me a fucking legit real deal fur shed. I need a fucking 20 by 15 fucking uh, pole barn. Yeah. That's what I was hoping that my fur money would go towards this year was uh, yeah. building a pole barn fucking trapping shed, but not well, now. I just got to go back and rebuilding my, sh my fucking rig that's broke now. Um, have you checked into those like Amish made buildings yet? The prefab buildings? The what? They're around here in Ohio. They're called prefab buildings. They're like, uh, you can get them 12 by 24 with a roll up door. You can get all kinds of different configurations, but you can buy one of those, ha have them set it up. And it's just as cheap or uh, cheaper than you building a pole barn. Now, if I had, if I had unlimited funds, I would do a two-story, I would do a two-story fucking uh, pull barn, a uh, fifteen yeah. by a uh, fifteen by twenty two-story, and I would have the upstairs as the drying area and the downstairs yeah. as the skinning room. That's yeah. my that's my end-all goal. Right. I mean, how badass would that setup be, dude, for real? Oh, it'd be great. You want me to tell you what my first shed is? I have to. What it I is or what your bit. dream shed is? My dream shed? Probably a 24 by 24 pole barn, pole barn style with concrete floor, insulated and heated. Two-story, though. Got to have it two-story. I'd at least have a partial second story for a, a hanging room. Yeah, hanging and drying, dude, yeah. But my first shed right now is a 53-foot uh, container trailer off a semi. Are you serious? Yep, you can buy them for like 1500 bucks. Really? Yep, I put it up on, uh, I put it up six block high. And anchored it down like you would a trailer with the tornado uh, anchors and straps and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's it's actually pretty nice. It's got a man door in the side and then the big roll-up door on the end where I can drive four-wheeler and stuff up into it. <laughs> That's the shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not in a subdivision by any means, but the the city rules around here dictate what I can do with my property. Right. You know, and I, a, a pole barn I can do. Right. But it has to be like 10 foot by 10 foot off of, uh, off the edge of the property line. So, yeah. and I'm only on, I'm only on like a, like a quarter acre of property or something. The lot's only a quarter acre. Yeah, see, I'm I'm clear out in the middle of the sticks. I can do what the hell I want, and I got 20 acres to do it on. That's a good one. He ain't no monster, but he'll he'll make a he'll make a a decent penny. I wish I could back out of this and still leave it running like you do, like in the side, and then go share it to Facebook and shit. I can't do that on my phone. Yeah, Facebook, I can't do that. As soon as I back out of it, it, clo it wants to close the fucking shit. Yep. I need to get quicker at skinning these fuckers down. It helps if your hands are warm, too. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, there's my... Can't get people to join. Yeah. Well, 
Kenny said he can't get people to join because my profile isn't public. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Kenny, I tell you what you can do. You can share it to Dan's page. Um, you can hit share and then you can hit a person and send it to them. Yeah, I'm in my room tab, the gun cabinet right behind me. Why is it so freaking cold, man? Damn. It's not that cold down here tonight. It was, uh, I went to the store a little bit ago and it said it was like 42 degrees. Oh, it's got to be, it's got to be in the low 30s here. Stephen Cooper's up in the house. Stephen Cooper, share this to Dan's wall so we can get all his people over here to watch. You don't have your Facebook set to public? No, I had some issues with a stalker like a year ago, and I set all my stuff to private. So I'm going to have to undo that. Yeah. Yeah, you like, might want to do that, champ. Like, that that hooker was, like, terrible. She was all up in my business. Steven's having Wi-Fi issues. Well, if nothing else, Steven, do me a favor and share it over to Dan's wall. That way we can get his people over to start watching this. I seen that, Tabitha, where he was over there in, uh, down there in New Orleans and stuff on the cruise. That's pretty cool. Uh, see what you can do, man. See if you can share it. If you can, cool. If you can't, man, we'll post it to his wall later. All right. Yeah, this live stream stuff, as cool as it is, it's freaking it frustrating has, as shit, man. It has its pros and cons, that's for damn sure. It won't let me share it either, Kenny. I don't know why it won't let me share it, but I can invite all the people I want. It just won't let me share it. Facebook's been doing some stupid issues lately, dude. Their live stream has been off and on for everybody. It's not just, it's not just us, you know. <clears throat> right. There's William Perko. I just invited him. How how did that go? Jason I mean, have you? Uh... I tried to call him the other day, and he was having yeah. some issues with his Facebook or something. I mean, you and I him are still uh, still chatting and planning on getting together, right? Yes. Uh, Michael Patterson's wife's profile said, "Hey, this is Michael Patterson's wife. They just banned him off Facebook. All oh, snap." Well, have him come on on his wife. Cooper said, yeah. He'll just have to watch on yours, Melanie. Uh, Stephen Cooper said he shared it to yours and it worked, so maybe we'll start getting some other ones. Tabitha shared it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, what the hell is getting Michael Patterson flagged? Dude, he's got PETA all over him. How the hell? I don't know. I don't understand that because – I mean, if, you know, I hate to say it, but if PETA was going to target anybody of the three of us, they'd be all over you, Dan. I, uh, I appreciate that. I mean, it's, it's the truth, but I hate to say it like that. You know what I mean? Because I do all this skinning, flashing, and boarding shit live. Exactly. Not because I'm an animal cruelty fucking dirtbag. Stephen Cooper said he got, uh, or uh, Stephen Cooper said Michael Patterson got banned for animal cruelty. I don't understand it. Uh, a fish hook in a fish's mouth ain't nothing compared to what Dan's doing, honestly. I don't understand the big deal about a fish hook in a fish's mouth. May, I think they even give him some flack on YouTube about it, I think. 
Yeah, I think they hit him up on YouTube about it today. Did you watch those dispatch videos I sent to you the other day, the couple, two or three of them? Uh, I may have. It might have been you or the one that Patterson sent me. Patterson sent me one that uh, these kids were um, out there dispatching and shit. Yeah. I sent you one. It was Dave Canterbury. He dispatched a coyote in a two-track road with a 12-gauge single shot with a 22 rifle adapter in it. And it, the whole thing from the time the hammer dropped to the coyote was dead was like four seconds. I seen uh I seen Wolfer Nation had one up there that uh Those I think it was I wanna say it was Wolfer Nation on how on his dispatch of coyote via um heart lung shot with a twenty two and he showed it and it's not Vander flagged and that was on fucking right. YouTube, dude. Yeah, that's Dave Canterbury did his with a heart lung shot, actually a heart shot on YouTube. Kenny Barker, where did you get those hat fish hooks at? These uh, it came in a three set of red, white, and blue, and I got them at Walmart. They're uh, ninety seven cents a piece. You can get them at Bass Pro Shop for four ninety nine yeah. each. Hey, you better take those hat hooks off. You might get fucking flagged by YouTube. Right. Melanie said he's good on YouTube. Uh, they said he was good. He didn't do anything wrong. He's all good on YouTube. Cool. So they just drilled him on. Oh, but I'm not? What the fuck? That don't make no sense. Did How long did they ban him for, Melanie? Is it just a couple days? Because usually it starts out like three days, and then seven, and then 15. You can't find the blue ones? I'll see if I can get a hold of one of them, and uh, if I can, I'll, I'll uh, hit you up, Kenny, and I'll send you a blue one, bub. It ain't no big deal. Dude, they, they hit me on my first strike on fucking YouTube, and it hit me for three months. Yeah. Usually on Facebook, it's like three days, seven days, 15, and then a month. Because I've been dinged for some of those memes and stuff like Jimmy Rucker sends you. Oh, really? Yeah. Not the ones that, in Messenger, they can't do nothing about it. Ah, uh, okay. He, he got banned indefinitely on Facebook. Jeez. I always Who did? Uh, Stephen, or not Stephen Cooper, but uh, Michael Patterson got banned, said he ain't banned on YouTube. He's banned for good on Facebook. He said that uh, he said that he had one more strike available, or well, some shit. He got nailed with that. He must have got it again, but said banned for good on Facebook. Melanie, tell him to start another Facebook profile, and don't use his name. Use something else. Use the last name Patterson, but change his name to like Sasquatch Patterson. Or you can open up the group page of. Uh... Fly Fishing TV, I'm sure, right? You could open up a group page, couldn't you? Yeah, you could open up a business page, kind of like a fan page for, for Sasquatch Patterson, you know, uh, Fly Fishing TV, and then put Michael Patterson as the nickname. Stephen Cooper said he always gets 30-day bans on Facebook, never a 3, 5, or a 7. And on YouTube, he said, I'm, I'm YouTube blackballed or blackbarred. Kenny, I actually had a a red, white, and blue. This one's an old gold one that's I've had since I was a kid, and I stuck it in the center because the white one is powder coated white and it chipped off real bad. God damn it! Ah, oh, there's that a sucked. That was a shitty cut. God damn it! I did not mean to do that one. The red one's anodized and Fuck. the blue one's anodized. The white one. Was I wanted to go and I wanted to go and slit. I wanted to go and slit the tail, and yeah. I don't know how well you can see that, but I wanted to go and slit the tail and fucking ran it through the outside. God damn it! Uh -uh. You can always sew it up with dental Fuck floss. Uh, at least it's on the tail zone. It's it's beyond the tailbone, so 
Just yeah, if I can find you uh, red, white, and blue ones, Kenny, I'll send them to you, bud. No problem. Melanie said, he said, screw Facebook. He's just going to use YouTube. Mm, you know, it is what he wants to do. You know, if that's what he wants to do, cool. He's just going to use uh, YouTube live. Okay. That lets us all know. I, where would have, I would suggest that he stays on Facebook, but merely use it as a portal to send people to his fucking YouTube. Yeah, there's Jimmy you know, Rucker. Jimmy Rucker in the house. Filthy fucker, Jimmy Rucker. Took him long enough, the motherfucker. I wonder if I can How add the hell Jimmy. How did I do it on both sides? God damn it. How the hell did I do that on both sides? I don't freaking know. It's par partially because I'm trying to rush it, too. God damn it, you know. Uh, Kenny, they had them. You could buy them all individually. I think it was like dollar ninety-seven or ninety-seven cents or something. But the one um, is junk. The powder coating's real thick on it, and it, it chipped off. So, and the white one I had gets. Said, I'm no longer allowed to have a YouTube profile, so I used my ex's email for my profile. I was banned from using YouTube for life for dangerous activity resulting in a near death of a friend. Well, I can kind of see where they uh, frown upon that just a little bit. This video broadcast is brought to you by Hornady Varmint Bullets. Please sponsor one of us. This video broadcast is also brought to you by Kishel Bates, the best woodchuck lure you can possibly get your hands on. Sponsor one of us. And also by Mark June's Ridge Runner Coon Lure, best I've ever used. <laughs> Brought to you by Speedway Coffee. Gas station coffee tastes like shit, but it keeps you fueled enough to do the goddamn trap line. Also brought to you by Trap Shack Company. Go look up Trap Shack Company. That's where I get all my urines, my baits, my lures. I don't like F&T posts. They suck. Also brought to you by Snap-on Tools. Power drills, cordless drills to go and run your dirt hole sets with an auger bit. Doing it the expensive way. Snap on tools, cordless. Sponsored by. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen Cooper got banned from YouTube for doing a taser demolition derby. Where you do normal derby, but a passenger tases you randomly and a good friend went into a cardiac arrest. Yeah, I'd say that would get you banned from YouTube, buddy. Stephen Cooper's on a different level, but he's good in my book. He's cool, dude. Yeah, he's Jimmy unique, Rucker. man. He's out there. Jimmy Rucker, uh, share this post, buddy. See what you can do. Because we got five viewers. I'm trying to get more of Dan's people in here. I invited Larry Compton, Ash, Ashley Compton. I invited all in people I could that was on my friends list, and you and Stephen. <clears throat> but I can't share it. So share it over to Dan's if you can. Share it in general if you can. I appreciate it, fellas. Yeah, we ain't got maybe about a half hour left, right? Yeah, about that. Something like that. Yeah, right five, now I'm minutes. relying upon uh, my woman to get me to and from work. 
So, right. Until I get my hands on another vehicle. Steven said 800 followers subscribe to his YouTube and all the videos and memories are gone. Um, have you tried looking up your channel from somebody else's YouTube to see if it's still there? Because maybe they took that video down and left the rest of them up. That's a possibility. See if I can invite some more people, get them to share it. Share hey, it. before I forget, Brian, before I forget, um, tomorrow hit me up on Messenger and uh, remind me, I got to get with you on how the hell to get registered with NAFA for the auction, uh, for the drop-off point and shit. Okay. Um. I got my registration. I gotta make sure I do right that. Here. I make sure I get the shit off the Right. Let me. I got my registration papers right here. Let me get them. Do you have any fur bags at all? I have done nothing except for look up the information on NAFA. That's all I got. Okay. You... Um, I've got the phone number, the address, all that stuff. You need to call them like tomorrow and have them send you their packet and bags. Tell them you got like 400 coons and, you know, 150 coyotes or whatever it is you think you got. And they'll send you bags in like four or five days. Bags in your registration paperwork and bag tags and all that stuff. Okay, that's all That's all stuff they don't have at the drop-off? They'll have bags there, but it'll take you forever because you got to write down. You got to put so many coons in a bag. You got to write how many you think are large, medium, extra large, whatever. So you want to go ahead and have that done before you go. Okay. Yeah, you'll have to walk me through the steps, man, because it's my first time taking them to auction. So. Right. But I've got all the information here you need, numbers, addresses, and stuff to get a hold of them to get it, and then you can schedule your pickup. Yeah, we gotta figure out. I gotta. I gotta figure out what. Uh, what drop off point it was near? It was an hour away from Kalahari Water Park. I know that. I don't know where that's at. Um, but I gotta figure out where that drop off point is, and then uh, I'm I'm still whoa, that not cool. Whole fucking rack just snapped. God damn it. But I got to figure out where the uh, drop-off point is, and then we'll all meet together for a um, – we'll all meet together for a uh, trapper breakfast together, us trappers. It'd be awesome. Right. By the way, um, Rich Goss, Rich Goss, he's going to make the drive – to yeah. meet with us in Ohio for the fur drop-off so we can experience the fur drop-off and to have trapper breakfast with us. Cool. Sounds good. And right as of uh, right now, when you get as here. of right now, he's got his furs in the, uh, he's got 20 furs or 21 furs right now. And his are still in the green. He's got them skinned, but they're in the green. Do they take the in the green at the drop off point? Nope. No. Final product only, huh? I don't. Yeah, it's gotta be dry because it goes from 
there to Canada, so a green ain't going to last from there to Canada in the back of a U-Haul truck. I guess that makes sense. You get, you, you know get what? Carbon, Fuck this rack. You get carbon copy papers like this that you got to put down, you know, amounts of fur that you have, badger, coon, beaver, whatever it is, and you'll get a red card. Uh, I don't care to show it because NAFA is the only one that can use that number, but you'll get a red card like that. It's got your uh, account number on it and address and stuff for them. And then you get the fur marketing, fur marketing and shipping handbook, which you need to get beforehand. They should be taking in, uh, even though they don't pull much money, they should be pulling, uh, you should be able to send in your possums this year, right? Yes. What about groundhogs? Are they taking groundhogs this year? Um... Silver links, links, cat, wild, mink, muskrat, otter, possum, sable, skunk, squirrel, timber wolf, wolverine, bear, castaway, ranch, mink. And no, no groundhogs. Real. They're taking badger, beaver, coyote, ermine, fisher, cross fox, gray fox, red fox, silver fox, lynx. Lynx cat, wild mink, muskrat, otter, possums, coon, sable. I don't know what a sable is. A skunk, squirrel, timber wolf, wolverine, bear. You're taking squirrel? Yeah. Uh, bear and the castorium out of beavers. Uh, ranch mink and ranch fox. You get papers like this. That's a triplicate copy where you got to mark down how many of what critter you got down here. Right. And you'll get bags. I got a whole box of bags right here at my feet. Now you'll get a handbook like this. It's the fur market handbook. It tells you how much they take, how they sell them. I don't know if you now do you have to pay for the bags. And, do you have to pay for the bags and packaging and shipping and all that shit? Uh, they take the shipping off the end of your fur check. The they shipping of the the, the fur bag. No, you don't have to pay for shipping of the fur bags. I got, they sent me like 400 of them for nothing. Oh, really? Yeah. They take their sale commissions 9% of the gross sale for members of NAFA. Non members is 11%. There will be no pickup charge for NAFA. Uh, collector receipt issued customer using for pickup service quantities will be All right, now are you a, are you a member? I'm assuming you are, right? Yeah. What's it cost to be a member? Like 40 bucks a year. So I'll probably be in my best interest to go and do that because you're going to make more money on the on the takeout anyway. Yeah. It'll save you like three or four percent on their final cost. I can give you February's fur prices, what they sold for in February. Hey, by the way, the uh, Kalahari Resort is in Sandusky, Ohio. Uh, that's like three and a half hours or four hours away from me. So wherever the drop-off point is closest to that is the one I'm going to. And uh, hopefully it's an hour in your direction, so you're only two hours away on the drive. But I'll make it worth your while, goddammit. I'll pay for a big boy breakfast for you, man. 
Wouldn't it be closer for you to go to Indiana than Ohio? Uh, probably not. I mean, I I, look, I had my woman look it up, and she's pretty smart with driving directions and shit. And she said right. on the mileage Because the dude did I get my bait look uh, the dude did I get my bait and lure through, Charlie Mashek. He's a a fur buyer for NAFA in Indiana. And there is one in Indiana, but it's uh, West Indiana. Let's see. You're in Michigan. Let's see. There ain't none in Michigan? There is yeah, way right up north, one. like four or five hour drive up north. Yeah, there, right here's one. It's UP, Michigan, and it's 710 Coleman. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa. God, this coon is a bitch all the way around, yeah. man. I swear. They'll, uh, when they send you your, your bags and stuff, you'll get a card that looks like this. And you got to list how many, say how many coons is in there. You got to go over and write it in there. And then this goes attached to your bag with your right on. Account, account number and all that stuff on it. Yeah. That makes sense, Stephen. He said Indiana is another two hours out of the way. Ohio is a straight shot. Yeah. See, I, I had a fur pickup down here, like I don't know, forty-five minutes from the house. But if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna drive all the way up there, I might as well do my fur drop off up there. I can switch it. I gotta give them like seven days' notice or something like that. It'll be worth a good breakfast with us trappers, dude. It'll be interesting. Plus, you, you know, Rich Goss is coming with us, so. Right. I'll show you boys what a stack of fur looks like. Did you take an end-of-season photograph yet? Not yet. That's what I'm going to do next week. I was kind of waiting on my back to heal up a little bit and stuff. Um. And then I was going to do end of season. Last year, I had to rent a U-Haul truck, a 16-foot box on the back to take the fur in. Really? Well, you got to figure if there's something. The fur drop-off, what, what do they have at the fur drop-off? A fucking semi? Yeah, either that or a, a big U-Haul truck. Last year, they when I dropped off, they had a 28-foot trailer on a u-haul truck and i took mine and another boy he had like 30 35 coons i just went ahead and paid him what i kind of figured they was going to go for just paid him cash for him throw him in with mine yeah the sad part is is i would say do the same thing with uh do the same thing with fucking um, Rich Goss, I, I, yeah. you know, because he's getting screwed over by his uh, by his fur buyer. His fur buyer hasn't called him back. That usually buys him in the green. So right. he's got he's got twenty one fur twenty one coons right now in the green. That uh, you know, he doesn't know what to do with at this point. Right. Let me find that paper again because it gave an average price for February. I don't know what the hell I just did with it. Here, this will give you an idea. This is one box of bags. That's 15 bags. They're huge. They're like three normal burlap sacks all put together. A hey, Melanie Patterson. Melanie Patterson, the reason you are getting flagged again is it goes off your IP address. So if yes. you're going to do it, you have to go off of a laptop or somebody else's phone 
when you create it so that it doesn't bounce back to your IP address. That's why you're getting flagged. Or um, plug in another router, like go buy another $10 router from Walmart, and that'll change your IP address. Oh, let me see what to give for raccoons. Average price in February for an average was $11.54. Seriously? That's what it says on this paper. I got it like two weeks ago. I, like heard, I, said, I heard somewhere they were getting about eight. Like I said, that was an average. That ain't counting highs and lows. Gee whiz. Did you know they go up to a 6XL coon? Yes, I've got one down in my basement. It's over 41 inches from nose to the base of the tail. I've got one down in my basement, brother. I got the mount back. Right. I got my, it's 52 and a half pound coon. I haven't tape measured the length, but it's a freaking monster. It's every, it's, it's pretty damn close to the size of my coyote. Well, this this will make you want to trap more coyotes next year. Okay, now listen. Let me guess. This eighty guy to hundred. Sold Ninety-one. This guy sold ninety-one western semi coyotes, is what they call them. Thirty eastern and a hundred western heavy. So he trapped a you know kind of a, a little bit of everywhere. The Western Heavy sold for eighty-one forty-three on average. Uh, the Western Semi sold for twenty-eight sixty-one, and the Eastern sold for sixty dollars and eleven cents. Damn, this coon's a challenge, man. I was hoping to get five of them ripped down, but this one's throwing me a friggin' damn, dude. This coon's no joke. But these fur bags are like three foot wide and like five foot long. I can get inside of one and curl up. Awesome. Wouldn't you wouldn't you be a funny surprise coming out of the bag at auction? Hello, right. bad boys! But they suggest you put at least 50 coons in one bag. Fifty of them in one bag? Fifty coons in one bag. All right. Well, it says 45 to 50. I want to hang one on my wall. I want to hang one on my wall like fucking uh, Coon Creek does. Coon Creek. I got NAFA bags and I have the uh, Fur Harvester of America bags. <laughs> like, no joke, dude. These things are huge. Like, like I am six foot three and they're three quarters of my body. So they sent you how many of those? I have 400. God damn. Why? I, I use them for all kinds of shit. You bag your leaves up with that shit? Yeah, bag leaves with it. Uh, like if I put peat moss in it to go trapping with, like to do my canine sets and stuff with, I fill one half full of peat moss. <laughs> I give some to my dad because he wanted to, uh, he's got a little outbuilding that he, uh, he skins deer in. So I give him enough to plaster the whole inside of it. That way, if they get dirty, he can just rip them down and then put new ones up. Jesus Christ, Brian.
Yeah, All right, I'm gonna I hang one more. I'm up. gonna hang one more coon up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna rip one more coon down. You, you know, I got the yeah. possum here that was from the other day. I'm gonna let that one sit until tomorrow, and then I got the double coon off the line tonight. So those will be good till tomorrow. Right. And these, okay. these two that I ripped down are not showing any green yet, so it should be good. Right. This box they sent me had. 12 bags in it and the paperwork and stuff I needed for 12 bags and it weighed 12 pounds. They must be doing pretty good if they can go and make their money back on all that shipping cost. Oh, yeah. And see, I sold to fur harvesters a long time ago when I was a kid and I, I'm a life member of fur harvesters. It's only like 20 bucks. <laughs> and every year fur harvester sends me bags and I've told them for the last five or six years, I don't want any fur harvester bags. You know, I'm not going to use you guys. They send me fur harvester hats, fur harvester bags, fur harvester shirts, trying to get me to sell fur through them. And I, I haven't for probably 10 or better years. Last year I sent 582 or three coons and a bunch of canines. And I got back to 17 top lot awards for coons. And I, don't, I think it was like nine or 10 for coyotes, four or five for fox. I had a possum in the top lot. Did he really? Yeah. It was a. Uh, let me look at that paper. It was a great big possum. It was, it was huge. Yeah, it was a 4X possum. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, a 4X is uh, 26 inches nose to the base of the tail or more. It was like a 22 or 23 pound possum. It was it was ungodly. Yeah, I have not gotten with all my... <laughs> I counted my taxidermy mounts that I got. I got 74 taxidermy mounts right now. I got one. I got 70 fucking four, dude. Turn wow, around and look at the hurt. camera. I'll show you my one. Hold on. There's my, right there's my one taxidermy mount. Dude, them are some hook horns on that boy. That's nice. Yep. yep. Shot him with the smallest center fire rifle caliber that you can use out there with 223. Well, I counted in antlers and antler placards too. I got a stack of them fuckers. Well, I got six or eight of them in here. Is that a boar coon right there? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> My grandpa always told me that you could count the rings on their tail. If they had an odd number of black rings, it was a boar. If they had an even number, it was a female. Really? I've never, I've never put that to the test and see what happens. Stephen Cooper said he got kicked out again. I don't know why you get kicked out, brother. I ain't doing it. Three California black bucks, one bear in my trophy room. Kenny Barker said he's got three California black bucks, black tail bucks, and one bear in his trophy room. That's good, dude. 
I don't have no bears. I ain't got no black bucks or nothing like that. We got white tails around here. Oh, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got I got six shoulder mount buck right now. That are yeah, shoulder mounted. Six shoulder mount buck. I got a groundhog getting attacked by a mink. That's on that's on one platform. Yeah. Uh I've got two squirrel mounts, two pheasant mounts. I got a beautiful Texas doll ram, full mounted, bedded down on my wall. I got my porcupine, that's mounted. Do they have a season uh, on porcupine up there in Michigan or what? Uh, no, no limit, and it's open with a small game season. Huh. See, like, like I can trap coyote down here year round, like three hundred and sixty-five days a year. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, but um, it's the way they got it set up. It's kind of weird. I can leg trap coyotes three hundred and sixty-five days a year, no limit. But I just have to, you know, buy my fur taker's license, you know, when it runs out. And uh, but if I catch anything else, then I have to call the ODNR and do it as an incidental. So there's really no sense in trying to trap them because one, the fur isn't any good. And two, I'd be calling them every day because the possum catches and coon catches and everything else. They don't want you to just release them? You got to call them. And if they tell you <laughs> on the phone to go and release it, you can. But a lot of times they want to come out and check a coon for rabies or a possum for rabies or whatever. Because here, here in Michigan, if you get an incidental catch that is not a protected species, they recommend you do a release first. And if it's dead in your, if it's dead in your trap, and it is not, a, if it's an incidental but not a protected species, you need to transport it in an open fashion to your local DNR office. Right. If it's a protected species, you're not allowed to touch them. The DNR must come out and then uh, remove them from the trap. Um, after this live stream's over tonight, I will uh, get you the information for NAFA. You need to go ahead and get on the phone tomorrow sometime if you can and get a shipment of bags and stuff sent to you, bags and tags and whatnot. Um, that way you can go ahead and get st stuff bagged up and hang it up there from your ceiling. That way it's ready to go. Um because there's Kenny Barker again. They have a sale May 8th to the 15th, and then they have a sale June 6th to the 10th. So whatever they don't sell of yours in May, they will sell in June. And if they don't sell it then, they'll hold it over to the next sale. So the, the next drop-off is when? May? No, no, that's not the next drop-off. That's the next sale that they hold. Okay. I haven't made it to the next drop off yet. So I want to say January, February, March, April. I want to say, I want to say it was mid to late April was the drop off. I think. Right. This says scheduled pickup service as a service to our customers. Many receiving agents run a scheduled pickup route. Please have your furs bagged and tagged and ready to be put on the truck. If they are not bagged and tagged and ready to be put on the truck, the shipper will not pick them up. Oh, shit. Yeah, so you need to call and get on the horn to them about some bags and tags and stuff. Yeah, I guess so. And you have to use the pre-printed labels that they provide in the bag, in the ba box for the bags. And do you have any, uh, let's see. Do you have any critters that need to have tags on them, like bobcats or anything like that? I do not. Okay, so you're good with that then. 
that's a whole nother animal in itself because those have to have those sight tags on them. Yep. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be badger, and uh, that would be badger and um, bobcat and otter. Badger, yep. bobcat, otter are the three. And even then, I don't know how it works with transporting those across state lines either. Well, it's when when you drop it off to them, they are uh, registered fur handling shippers. So then the tag that would be on your bobcat would go with that pelt. It has to. Then you would keep a record of that tag number or a photo on your phone of the tag number. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, but for sure, you need to get on the horn tomorrow or sometime soon as you can and get get an order in for some bags. Yeah, tomorrow about lunchtime, I'll, uh, I'll have to phone conference you when I'm sitting behind my desk, and I'll take down all the information, and uh, then I'll get off the phone with you, and I'll make an immediate call over there and get that shit done. Right. Um, they'll ask you about how many critters you think you got. You know, just tell them double what you think you got. That way you get plenty of bags. If you think you yeah. got three hundred, if you think you got three hundred coons, tell them six hundred. They don't question that, eh? Nope, not a bit. Uh, because they want you to put forty-five, fifty coons in each bag, and you know, three hundred coons will only be six bags. So, I think each box they send holds about 20 bags. So, once you start rattling off numbers like that, they'll just go ahead and send you 20 bags, 20 tags, everything you need. And then if you don't use it this year, you can always hold it over till next year. The bags and stuff anyway. Right. It says right here, one of their first few rules is do not ship green or frozen furs or cast out storium. Dry properly and ship in a cardboard bat box or burlap bags with your name, address, account number written on the outside. So he cannot sell them green, can't send them green fur. Not a problem on my behalf. I'm just trying to figure out a way to help out uh, our good old buddy, Rich Goss, dude. Right now, he's sitting there with uh, nobody to sell to because his independent buyer is just kind of ignoring him right now, I guess. Is he in Michigan? He is. Um, might want to do some checking and see who will buy green fur around there, maybe even in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Because if all else fails, he could – you know, freeze them, put them in some dry ice, and send them to you, and you could take them to your, you know, a local fur buyer there. Well, if you can get them over to me soon enough, I'll throw them in with my till, dude. Fuck you. Right. <clears throat> I just got to get all these fuckers flushed and boarded. That's what I'm getting nervous about. Right. I'm not seeing when the pickup is in this paperwork. I know it's in my truck in my clipboard. What do you do for a living, man? I mean, what what's your nine to five, or do you not have a nine to five? I am a warehouse worker. Believe it or not, I'm a forklift driver. Right on. How do you have enough time to check that much of a line then? I work a very cool schedule. I work Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, 12-hour shifts. 
And when I'm not, when I'm at work, Raymond checks the line. While I'm at home Tuesday through Friday, I do all the checking and resetting. So whatever's caught in the okay, three days. So you got, yeah, so you yeah. got help. You got help on your line. Yeah, I got another guy. He works five days a week and I work three days a week. So I work Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, four in the afternoon till like five in the morning. And he works Monday through Friday, third shift. So whatever is caught and sets are destroyed on the weekends, don't get reset till Tuesday when I go out to set the line. He sends me a text with all the the, the information, you know, set 30, 35, 40, 45. All those are, you know, all those need reset. Uh, I had two helpers. I had two helpers early on in the season, and that was a big, huge benefit. And then both of right. them decided it was more important to go to bars, get drunk, and snort coke and shit. And they gave up yeah. on it. They didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Right. But it was kind of a pain in the ass for me and Raymond to get started doing this together because, you know, I had all the traps and the equipment and the knowledge and the know-how. So I had to bring him into it green as a goose and teach him everything. And I had to put his name on all my trap tags. That way we could both check our traps legally without yes. his name being on it. He can't touch my traps. Well, he can, but if he gets caught doing it, then it's a big fine. So I had to spend like 300 bucks on trap tags just to be able to put his name on all of them. I had to redo all of That's them. That's nuts. Right? But it is what it is. Instead of just having um, one tag on the on a trap that's got both our names on it and stuff, it all wouldn't fit. So I just went ahead and had his printed up, and I put both our tags on there. There you go. Yeah, until this year, I was always using uh, I was always using the fucking write on tags, dude. And I got told by DNR that's yeah. not good enough this year. No, because. I mean, it is what it is, but they flatten out really easy, and you can't read them. Not legible enough. That's what I got told. Yep. Yep. And but I'm they come in that little. Even, they come in that little Manila envelope, you know. Yeah, I'll tell you an even better than the the copper stamped ones you get, and it's kind of expensive, but they last forever. Is buy you a ten or so foot piece of freaking half inch copper pipe and split it long ways and then cut three inch sections out of it all the way down and get you an engraver and engrave your, your license number or whatever it is you need on there. I got one trap tag that's 13 years old. There you go. And uh, Coon Creek does his on uh, aluminum flashing, I think. Yeah, I like my copper tags that I got through uh, Northern Trapping Supply. I've been happy what with all those. Do you, what all do you have to have on your trap tags? Name and driver's license number. Okay. Um, you might, might want to check with the DNR in your region. You may be able to put your hunting license number and your driver's license number on your trap like I did. Would you engrave the jaw of the trap with it? Yes, I did. I put my driver's license number on one jaw and my hunting license number on the other jaw. That yeah, I'd way, have to check and see. I mean, it, it took me a while, but then you don't have to worry about it rubbing off or whatever. You know, it's it's on there. And a lot of guys will do it. Uh, they'll engrave the jaws, and then they'll do it on the base plate or the bottom, you know, bottom of the trap, too. So what I do is when I, you know, when I got my 
new clean traps and I go out and set for the first time, I'll take dirt and rub in them numbers and then they stand out real good. Right. <laughs> but that beats paying for tags every year that get chewed up and whatever. Yeah, those right on tags were not the greatest thing in the world, but they got me by a few seasons and yeah. never questioned. But this year they were really, really like, yeah, uh, no, you can't do that because they're not legible. So we're going to give you a warning because they're tagged. But... Right. Um, the copper ones work real good. I've had good luck out of them, especially with the ones I did for Raymond, um, where I had my name or my stuff engraved on my trap. I just went ahead and threw a tag on there for him and one of my tags. That way, if something happened, they couldn't see the ones on the jaws. At least there was a tag there. And I just threw his tag on with mine, like keychain style. I did it with a piece of trapping wire and done it almost down to the swivel on the bottom. And I've only had just a few where they got both tags chewed off. All right. But the brass ones, if you can afford the brass ones, they, they're a lot better. And I know these like, fucking heads on these ones, man. These fucking heads on these ones tonight are a pain in the ass. Do they generally seem to be younger coons or are they all different? Yeah, these ones are probably a year and a half to two year olds, maybe. Because I've noticed the older they get, the easier are they are to skin. Like the bigger they are, they're really easy to skin. Yeah, you got to run a live stream on your uh, on your trapping shed setup, dude. I want to see that shit. Yeah, it works out pretty good. The man door that's in the side of it, uh, like two foot to the left of it towards the back of the trailer, like where the big door would be, I, uh, I built a, a two by six wall right there, two by six and insulated it with a man door going into the back. That way I can come in from either way, get into my trap room. Uh, the back has my four wheeler in it and stuff, and it's like 16 feet. That way, I could park two or three four wheelers in there, or I could even drive a truck up in there if I wanted to. Um, and then the whole front half is, you know, skin and shed, dry and all that stuff. I'd say like the front Dude. third is all where I hang. So you're saying that you're saying that according to your paperwork, these coons are going about eleven dollars this year on average. That's what the sale said for February. But they might have some go higher than that. They might have some go way lower than that. It just depends on depends on your fur. I'm hoping I'm hoping for every one of them to be a top lot. Yeah. We all hope for that and it never happens. No, I just hope to get I, I hope to get one or two top lot sheets this year. That would be cool. That would make my day in the mail, dude. I would be a happy guy with one or two top lots. Well, keep in mind that those were Northwestern coons too. So I'm going to guess like, you know, out like toward Washington, somewhere in that direction. Yeah, that'd be Northwestern. So, yeah, he averaged. Why? Would they would they typically pull more money or less money? I don't know. I've never seen a Northwestern coon, you know what I mean? 
I mean, how can they tell? Is it just merely by where the drop off or the pickup point is? I know they take that into consideration because I know certain certain sectors, their coyotes are a lot better or a lot worse, you know. <laughs> Like in the coyotes on this, it, this is a, a comparison sheet is what it is. It says coyote western heavy, they averaged $81, but an eastern coyote averaged $60. Woo, there we go. Number three down. And this one down here. I'm not, the, I'm not the slowest guy in the world, but God damn it. I'm a close second. I swear to God. This says Eastern red foxes went for 1339 on average. I know that foxes are down, dude. I, I wanted to say they were in about the 20 to 30 mark, but. Uh, they're, they're lower than that. They have been for probably the last four or five years. That's terrible. And the sad thing is, I've got just a touch over 200 foxes. Damn it. I haven't even got one yet. I got one gray last year, and he's getting mounted. Um, it's saying gray foxes were mainly withdrawn due to low price, and red sold for an average of 1339 but over here it says grays were average of 962 in June, the June of last year sale. So. Well, let me run right. these three. Uh, let me run these three out of the carcass box real quick. All right. And then it's going to be time to wrap it up. Okay, this is what I'm gathering. They run three sales a year. February 9th to the 14th, May, May 8th to the 15th, and June 6th to the 10th. That's their three sales a year that they run. And then in this, in this suggestion sheet, it seems that the April sale that they have everything gets a little higher price. So with you dropping off the time you're going to, you're going to hit the April sale and you should get the most money for your fur. I know it ain't about the money and it truly isn't, but you know, well, if it's a dollar or two higher than what I expected. Right. Yeah, at least that'll make my uh, my cash investor happy. Right. The way I see it is I want to get the most money I can out of the time that I put into those critters, whether it's a dollar on a possum or 75 cents. I want to try and maximize what I get. That makes me have money for that much more traps or that much longer of a line next year. So my trapping goes right back into trapping. My fur check does. <coughs> So how to what? Your all the all the money goes back into your trapping to do what? Buy supplies and gear. Supplies, you know, bait, lure, urine. I end up going through about five gallon of urine a year just for canines, just for canine sets. Five gallons.
Okay. In yeah, February. I was I was figuring uh initial plan was to uh 